بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم قلو اللہ وحد اللہ سمت لم یلد ولم یولد ولم یکل لہو کفوا آہد جزاک صدق اللہ العظیم I would like to extend my gracious and a warm welcome to all of you. I appreciate you all who are present here for taking up time from your busy schedule and joining us today for today's workshop. How it's gratifying to know that inshallah today's workshop is going to cover a wide range of the variety of the topics and I hope you all will learn a lot. I'm especially thankful to my the guests, honorable guests who are here. So first I would like to invite the chairman and the co-chairman of the session. Uh, first, uh, Dr. Alam Ibrahim, he is a professor at the, and the HOD of the Chanka Medical College. Sir, please come on the stage. Uh, Dr. Maimuna Siddiqui, she is HOD Shifa International Hospital, Islamabad. Now, I would request my chairman and the co-chairman to please proceed with the next session and the rest of the program. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. So, Assalamu alaikum, we will start with uh, today's scientific session and uh, our first talk is by Dr. Sara Khan, she is the assistant professor and uh, she is a neuromuscular specialist and assistant professor and director of the clinical neurophysiology lab at Akhan University Hospital, Karachi. She will be talking about current and future trends for neuromuscular medicine in Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here and it is a great honor for me today to be representing both the Asian Oceanian Myology Center and the Pakistan Society of Neurology. Um, uh, this is just an overview of my talk. I'd uh, briefly introduce the AOMC to everyone and then we'll discuss neuromuscular medicine in Pakistan and discuss the challenges and future trends. If I speak slowly enough, maybe we'll have enough people by the next talk, so. Okay. Um, so the AOMC, or the Asian Oceanian Myology Center, was in inaugurated in January 2001 in Tokyo, uh, Japan. And it has uh, uh, a board uh, where we have the president, and the Vice President and the Secretary. And we're very honored uh, today to have the President, uh, Dr. Professor Nunaka uh, from Japan with us today and also the Secretary, Professor Nishino, also from Japan. Um, the member countries, there are approximately 16 member countries uh, in the OAMC and Pakistan was uh, accepted as a board member earlier this year. Um, and the list of countries is expanding <clears throat> every year and the spread is uh, pretty widespread in the ocean, uh, Asian Oceanian region. The purpose of the main aims of the AOMC are to promote uh, basic clinical and scientific research on, in the neuromuscular field amongst the member countries and it presents a scientific forum where members can be updated in the advances and in innovations in the neuromuscular field and this they do by a yearly annual conference that is held in one of the member countries every year. Uh, it provides educational opportunities for young investigators and clinicians of the member countries and it promotes the achievement of standards in clinical practice in the neuromuscular field and allied medical services in the Asian Oceanian region. And the last one is to encourage new, uh, new and strengthen existing multidisciplinary collaborations. And it is to achieve this aim that the AOMC is present with us today for, the, uh, for this conference and also earlier for the workshop uh, just to promote neuromuscular um, education in Pakistan and help to establish collaborations now between different countries. So the next meeting uh, is in Singapore and uh, it is guaranteed to be a very exciting academic uh, and research oriented neuromuscular uh, conference with international and uh, national speakers and you can get more information on the website of the AOMC. Uh, this is uh, uh, the website that you can get more information both about the AOMC and uh, the conference. 
So uh, I'm going to discuss neuromuscular medicine in Pakistan now. So just to give you an overview, the mil uh, population is about 200 million. And for that 200 million population, we have 160 qualified neurologists. So we have one neurologist for every 1.25 million uh, people. More than 88% of the neurologists are trained in Pakistan and 19 are foreign trained. Of these uh, 160 neurologists, to my knowledge, two are specifically trained in neuromuscular medicine. So myself, I'm in an academic tertiary care center, and uh, other one, Dr. Shahid Mustafa, is also with us today. He is uh, in a private practice uh, setting. So a lot of burden on neurologists, uh, basically, to see every kind of neurology problem, and that's probably why specific fields uh, cannot be uh, developed or focused on because of this death. But when we talk about the population of Pakistan, um, the, it is very rich in um, neurological diseases, obviously, but also very rich in neuromuscular diseases. And that's because the, con uh, the rate of consanguinity is very high. Uh, according to a recent survey, there's 61.2% consanguinous marriages, and that includes first and second cousins. And along with other hereditary disorders, the incidence of hereditary neuromuscular disorders is very high. Now, I don't have a number for that because there hasn't been any uh, formal research in that. But I can tell you and all of us uh, from our cl clinical practice have seen that hereditary neuromuscular disorders predominate uh, dominate over acquired neuromuscular disorders. So it's very important for us to uh, start developing this field. Now, what are the challenges that we face? So the diagnostic challenges, um, if we start with just uh, expertise, like you've already seen that the number of neurologists in proportion to the population is very low. So availability of clinical expertise. A lot of these patients will go through general physicians before they ultimately see a neurologist. And then they'll go through multiple neurologists uh, and ultimately end up with a specialist. By that time, usually about you know, five to 10 years have passed from the onset of their disease. There's delay in referrals, and then the biggest problem is a lack of diagnostic testing. So most of us are very proficient in identifying these neuromuscular disorders, but where do we go from there? Uh, that is the problem. Why is diagnostic testing a challenge? First step, biopsy. There's lack of clinical expertise, uh, technic uh, technological expertise to make these slides. So once the biopsy comes to the lab, nobody has expertise as, as to how to prepare the slides. Um, so even if the pathologist is trained to read those slides, but if he's given those slides, he won't know what to make of them. Ne next is on, at the pathologist level, there's lack of training, formal training to read nerve and muscle biopsies uh, with the pathologist. The pathologists read everything. And often, ambiguous results. So the flow, the flow chart for neuromuscular diseases, once you've done your clinical impression uh, and you've done your labs, the next thing is muscle biopsy. So if you're very clear in your clinical impression that the person has proximal weakness, the CPK level is high, the EMG is showing myopathy, you go and order a muscle biopsy, and then the muscle biopsy ends up being reported as neurogenic changes. Then you don't know what to do, and you almost wish that you hadn't ordered the biopsy, that you had gone on your clinical impression, and, uh, and you know at the same time, the patient is complaining that you wasted our money if you're not going to use those results of the biopsy. So uh, more and more neuro neurologists, at least I know in our Khan, they're stepping away from ordering a muscle biopsy. They, be, uh, they feel more confident relying on their clinical impression um, and uh, the ancillary testing rather than doing a biopsy. And I've been, these uh, slides are from our lab and I've been told they're the best slides they have. They actually gave me the good slides when I had asked them to give me the regular slides. But even if you see in the good slides, it's wrought with artifacts. Uh, so the first one, this is an H&E stain. It's not supposed to be so um, you know, dark and angry looking. And then in the next one, we have artifacts because of preparation. So those aren't really vacuoles, but they're artifacts of preparation. And this is, this is a good slide. 
to have uh, for the pathologist. Same is the case with the Gomori trichrome. Whenever I see this, I get, you know, it ha trichrome means it has to have the tricolors, the three colors. But this is what usually the trichrome looks like with just a, a lot of stain, uh, both uh, the first two slides. And again, this is the same with SDH staining and uh, ATPS staining. It's a lot of stain there and not really deciphering the muscle fibers. So for, for our pathologists, these are very good slides. But what are they? It's not their fault, you know, even if they don't, if they know how to read them, how will they read these slides? So um, that's, that's the first step. Then the next step, genetic testing or lack of availability of genetic testing. It's not available in Pakistan now, except for, um, I know in Aa Khan we uh, have testing for uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, Becker's and for spinal muscular atrophy. And I believe in Shifa also spinal muscular atrophy is now being tested for. But then that's one center and our machine has been down for the last one and a half year. So that effectively means no genetic testing for uh, the population right now. What, what about, so this was the physician challenges and what about the society? Now, this delay in seeking specialized care, um, they will wait and wait for their disease to progress and by the time they reach a specialist, um, we really can't offer them much as much as we could have in the beginning. If you happen to suggest that this may be a hereditary disorder, that this is maybe with, uh, within the family, they get angry at you, they get frustrated. They don't like you because you didn't give them a pill, you didn't prescribe anything. And they will go from doctor to doctor. So all of us know these patients. Uh, they will have f gone through every neurologist in the city and they will finally end up with you again five years later with the same diagnosis, now much worse and wheelchair bound. So that's a problem with the society too, uh, failure to accept and maybe at some point uh, failure of the physicians to counsel them. They do not want to go uh, undergo expensive testing. So once you've told them that this is a heredity disorder and maybe we won't be able to treat it, they don't want to undergo a biopsy, which is an invasive procedure. They don't want to undergo um, um, MRIs or anything else if you're not going to change our management after that. They want you to write a pill for them. And if you don't, if you're not going to do that, then they don't want to undergo testing. And then lack of follow-up. Uh, once you've diagnosed them, um, and I, you know, I set up a neuromuscular clinic uh, for these patients, uh, and I just realized I save everybody's um, record numbers. And these patients came, and half of them, they, they were, on an average, I'd seen them three to five years ago, so they, so they don't follow up. And what patients don't realize is over time, they may develop symptoms that can help the doctors identify the disease much better. So maybe in the beginning, the f clinical features aren't that obvious, but over time, the clinical features become more obvious. And if they keep following up with us, maybe at a later stage, maybe two years down the line, we'll be able to give their disease a name. So that's, th that's a problem that we face. Um, networking. Over five years, I have managed to at least shift my clinical practice to 70% neuromuscular. So in every clinic, I am seeing a lot more neuromuscular uh, patients. Um, and the rest of the 30% is general neurology. And I tell you, we have everything neuromuscular. You name it, every category we, we have in our population. Um, so we have all kinds of motor neuron disease, not just ALS, but all different kinds of motor neuron disease. We have all kinds of neuropathies, hereditary and acquired, and all kinds of myopathies, hereditary and acquired, if we start looking for them. So how can we help? How do we need to change things? First step, biopsy. We need to start rallying. Now, it's, I understand it's very difficult to neuro for neurologists, um, even for myself. If say I decide that I'm going to start doing nerve and muscle biopsies, it's going to be very difficult for me because I'll start getting all kinds of other pathology slides um, and I'll have to keep seeing general neurology. So I understand for neurologists it would be very difficult, but I think what we need to do is rally our pathologists 
we need to invest in our pathologists um, and this is something I'm going to try to do with our pathology department if they're ready to invest in a person uh, to go and be formally trained for neuromuscular pathology that would be the first step because just on the basis of biopsy as you'll see with our coming talks we are able to narrow down the results uh, of or the diagnosis of what the patient may have genetic testing um, so um, over the last five years somehow or the other I have found avenues where some of the patients have been able to send genetic testing out and get them tested for free some of them have been part of research projects some of them have been funded by Jane Foundation and of all these patients that uh, I've tested uh, we've identified all these different kinds of genes so we uh, I've had patients with dysferlinopathies we've had alpha and uh, beta cycloglycan uh, mutations we have collagen 6 disorders trim 32 GNE myopathy and titan myopathy and these are all um, confirmed on genetic testing now and and here also the importance of collaborations comes in so the last patient the titan uh, titanopathy patient um, it was a coincidence that I saw this patient one week uh, before going to the AOMC conference uh, earlier this year and this patient had two brothers who had seen Dr. Ulrich uh, and had been diagnosed there with a the titanopathy and a good fortune one week later I met Dr. Ulrich at the AOMC meeting and when I just mentioned the patient he immediately remembered oh yes I saw two brothers and they have this syndrome and it's a titan myopathy and then he wanted me to get MRIs of this patient and send it to him so that's the importance of collaboration so even if you can do the clinical part of it uh, just with these collaborations you'll be able to offer them some kind of diagnosis so all of these and much more genetics are um, uh, the mutations are present in our population the next is muscle MRI and the muscle MRI is uh, more and more in the neuromuscular world uh, is becoming a very popular um, um, modality for, for diagnosis what I have started doing when I started getting disappointed with uh, the biopsies I've started doing muscle MRIs now the radiologist will just be able to tell you will help uh, obviously in telling you if there's a obvious inflammatory process going on so if it's an acquired disorder versus if it is um, uh, hereditary but what I have to do is actually in the comfort of my office I need to go through this MRI myself because most hereditary neuromuscular disorders have a very specific pattern so there will be atrophy of specific muscles and sparing of specific muscles and it would be depending on that pattern of which muscle is spared and which muscle is atrophic the, you can re reliably say that this is this specific kind of muscular dystrophy so this is something we need to develop and this is something we can do because MRIs are available in most hospitals this is something we can work on to bake protocols and just on the basis of MRI and my um, my uh, clinical impression the EMG the CPK levels and then putting the MRI findings together um, there was one more if I know where to uh, I've been able to narrow down basis uh, on the basis of my history and examination on the basis of ancillary testing and on the basis of MRI findings I've been able to narrow down the diagnosis in some of these patients to calpinopathies dysferlinopathies and al alpha cycloglycanopathies so muscle MRI can also help so and the future trends now and again this is where um, we come in um, uh, the AOMC comes in and the, uh, the, the, this is a very good meeting here with the PSN meeting the AOMC specialists we can uh, in the future collaborate with them and if we are able to 
work on our diagnostic testing, if we're able to get more and more of these patients, we'll have a patient population which we can actually offer for research, okay? There are pharmaceutical companies who are looking for patients who will uh, treat the, uh, or di uh, test these patients for free. So if we can identify more and more of these patients, we'll be able to uh, contribute to clinical trials and in the, at the same time help the patient uh, get free testing and, um, and treatment. Now, what about other neurological speci uh, specialities in Pakistan? If we look right now, most of the specialities, we've, we're at par with the Western world, okay? If we look at stroke, we're almost there. Uh, interventional uh, neurology has started. Uh, we're almost at par with the rest of the world. If you look at par, uh, par movement disorders, Parkinson's disease, we're almost at par with the rest of the world. Um, we have all the medications. We've started deep brain stimulation in some parts of the country. We're almost there. Headache, we can offer them everything. Multiple sclerosis, all the medications, most of the new line medications are now available in Pakistan. And diagnostic testing for all these um, uh, diseases are available. But what about neuromuscular medicine? That's the one field that has, is now uh, completely neglected. And I think more as a com neurology community, we haven't worked on it because we say, okay, oh, these are heredity disorders. We're not going to do anything about it. So let's not waste our uh, time and energies on this side. So I think the time is now. We have to, this is the time for neuromuscular medicine. We have looked at all other specialities and now as a neurology community, we need to start working on neuromuscular medicine. And first of all, it's, it falls on us. We diagnose these patients, but we give them hope, okay? Because every year, there's research ongoing on all these neuromuscular disorders. One or the other drug is being approved. Most recently, uh, atelurin was uh, approved by the FDA for uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy for a certain kind of mutation. How can we offer that drug to our patients if we don't know what their genetics are? And this will keep going on. In the coming years, we're going to see more and more of these drugs uh, which uh, will be approved and which will be effective for treatments of hereditary uh, neuromuscular disorders. If we don't diagnose them, if we don't work on their diagnostic testing, we will not be able to offer treatment uh, to our population. So now is the time. All other neurological specialities are taken care of. Now it's time for neuromuscular medicine and I think all of us need to rally our pathology departments and our core neurologists and we need to start working on this. So with that I'm going to end and uh, thank you. Uh, thank you Dr. Sara. We can have questions at the end.